Hey guys, Greg at Best Choice Trailers. Today we're going to take a walk around the Shore Track STWCH. That would be the Shore Track Wedge Nose Car Hauler. Shown here would be an 8.5 by 24 with a 5,200 pound axle upgrade, so a 9,900 pound GVW, shown in charcoal exterior. So we've taken videos of this particular model before, but these do change certain little nuanced things about every year. Normally there's a couple differences, so just want to make an updated video. Shown here is a 2023 model year unit. So let's take a walk around it. Everything seen here is standard equipment. Colors do change. Uh, you know, we get a lot of white, silver, black, and charcoal. Silver being a little bit lighter color. Black, obviously black, and white being the lightest. And there's some other available colors in between. So a couple things we like on the shore track, and I'll start out front. They build a little bit longer uh, tongue and a little bit shorter venos than most in the market. So traditionally, you're going to get about a two-foot nose, maybe on a car hauler, just a little bit longer. This one's going to measure probably 16 to 17 inches inside. Uh, the reason they do that is to give it extra maneuverability. If you got a six-foot wide truck uh, on a single wheel, you're going to need about three foot of clear span, or you're going to have issues with the stone guard. So manufacturers build the shorter tongues and the longer noses generally tend to run into problems in those areas. Uh, a couple things up front, point out standard two and five sixteenth inch couplers, standard on most. Uh, one thing they do a little bit different, they cap the end of the tongue, uh, so acid rain and salt doesn't get in and lay there. Uh, this has a setback jack, so it's a 7,000 pound setback jack instead of the traditional 2,000 pound bottle jack. A few nice features, that can uh, come in contact with your tailgate when you set it down depending on how long the ball mount is. Uh, the setback jack gets it back farther out of the way. Uh, there's a pin you can pull for the inner leg and then the outer leg here would be what's going to be adjusted by the top wind jack. Uh, breakaway cable, standard equipment if you're not familiar. Uh, if the trailer ever disconnected from the tow vehicle, uh, this would, would pull the onboard battery here and uh, would, would put it to a stop. That is uh, an item that DOT does check uh, you know, if you were ever to get stopped, those batteries generally are good for a couple years and then they need replaced. Uh, jack is bolt on instead of weld on, makes it nice if you ever need to replace it. If you look closely at the plug, there is a plug holder. Uh, that was an ad a few years back. It's also going to be a seven pin RV blade style plug. Notice there's dual prong connections instead of just a single. If by any rare chance you do bend one, and we've seen it occasionally. Uh, you've got a second prong there to make contact. Nice little feature. So again, you do have a plug holder as well. Now it is a sealed wire harness, uh, not a not a single strand or anything like that. You notice also the wiring is all grommeted, ran in frame. Uh, that's not always the case. So nice little feature from Shore Track. You also got a chain uh, chain holder. I'll point out their safety chains. It's a little detail, but there's a lot of these type details on this trailer. That's an equipment grade chain, not a traditional uh, car hauler chain. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of details like that on the trailer. I'll point out another one. It's a three inch bottom trim instead of a one. Notice they use self tappers. Uh, that's a heavy duty uh, lag instead of the standard body style self tappers. Miter to the corners and instead of just a butt cut. Makes it nice clean look uh, for the trim. You also notice it's a triple tube tongue instead of a traditional A-frame. Uh, and then it's going to be headered up up front. And then underneath the trailer, I'll show you here in a second, it's also headered. So you've got a, a triple tube tongue uh, structure. We'll show you a lot of manufacturers actually don't header up uh, their A-frame with, uh, with structural. This is actually headered with a 2 by 6 Notice the, the corners are finished. That started probably two, three years ago. Gives it a nice, clean, finished look. Uh, this does have LED lights all the way around. You notice there the newer style bullet LED. And you've got side flow through vents. If you're not familiar with venting, uh, historically, I'll say older trailers, generally you're probably gonna see more root vents. Newer trailers, generally you're gonna see more of the side vents. So you've got an intake on the driver's side opposite the exhaust on the passenger side. It's getting clean air in. It's gonna cross ventilate. You're gonna have the exit out the bottom rear passenger side. So it's gonna ventilate out that trailer when you're going down the road. Uh, one reason manufacturers uh, have gone to them, there's no holes and penetrations on your roof, which speaking of the roof, this is a one piece aluminum roof. 
uh, not the Galvalume seam together roof that you sometimes see as well. So it is a one piece uh, roof with your side vents. Now, if you look down the side and it looks cleaner than you're used to seeing, that's because this is a screwless exterior. Screwless means just that, screwless. There's no screws holding the seams together. So your aluminum exteriors have four foot panels. Traditionally, you'd have a bead of screws roughly on a four to six inch screw pattern. Just looks a lot cleaner. Decal guys like it. Uh, if you do happen to decal, it's gonna look a lot better. If you don't decal it, it's still gonna look a lot better. This is an 030 aluminum exterior. You're gonna see that generally is the industry standard. Some of your more economical trailers will use an 024. Obviously the thinner the metal, the more I'll say warped or wavy it's gonna look on a hot day. Uh, sometimes not even on a hot day. If you get a, a day where the sun pops out and it's a cold day, uh, that exterior will look a little, little warped on it. But again, screwless takes, uh, takes all those screws out. Uh, we do the majority of our shore tracks with the 5,200 pound axles. You can easily see uh, if it's a 52. Uh, here it's gonna be a six lug, so that'd be your 5,200 pound axle. They're gonna be equipped with a 225, 75 R15 radial tire. That's gonna be a load range D, which is an eight ply. They take 65 pound of air. Notice these are equipped with the upgraded aluminum wheels. Now, if you don't see a equalizer in the center here, that's because this is not a spring suspension. This has the upgraded Torflex or torsion suspension. It's independent rubber ride, so you have an independent suspension at each wheel. If you hit a pothole on this side, it's not gonna bounce your trailer on the other side because they're not linked together like a traditional spring suspension trailer. You've got basically a uh, axle beam with rubber cords in the four corners and then a center shaft. And uh, as this wheel hits a pothole, this wheel's gonna go down, the other side's gonna keep continuing like it was. Uh, you've got your fenderette. Now, if you're not familiar with these, this is an eight and a half wide trailer, but to be clear, that measurement's gonna be the outside of the fenderette. Your body's gonna be eight foot four to the outside, and then inside wall to wall, you're gonna be about eight foot. Uh, keep that in mind for whatever you may be hauling. Also, uh, fender boxes inside are gonna measure about 10 and a half inches high, and they protrude from the wall about six and a half to seven inches. Fender to fender inside, we're gonna be about 81 and a half inches. Uh, a couple other details, a little bit different than most in the industry. This has four, what I call full width hinges. They're probably gonna measure 10, 11 inches wide. Sometimes you'll see your cheaper trailers will have about a five inch wide hinge. Uh, these also have your greaserts on them. Uh, rear corners are also finished. You'll notice there's five bumpers at the top. Sometimes you'll see two or three. Um, also uh, trimmed out in the ramp door. Pet peeve of mine, some of your cheaper trails will leave that exposed steel. It just rusts over time and looks bad, but this is, uh, this is trimmed out in aluminum. Uh, hardware, a little bit better. This is made in Indiana hardware, uh, Flexco. It's just a little bit taller, seems to work a little bit better. Um, doors seem to open a little bit better with the Flexco hardware too. You don't see uh, as much of the squeak. Uh, also notice that uh, the, the way this hardware is set up, it covers um your bits for your door your security bits uh a lot of your hardware is going to come out here and it's going to leave those open somebody can come by and uh pull those off this is a little bit harder for somebody to get into it might let your stuff alone uh tail lights on these you've got your stop turn tails but also you've got uh backup lights built in to that light nice feature on these uh, one other thing I'll point out, you've got dual aluminum handles. So on both sides, we have a handle. A lot of doors, you're going to have one. Then these are also an aluminum handle, not a plastic handle. Uh, little detail, short tracks isn't going to be on a spec sheet, but just an observation over the years, their door is pretty well, I'll say, perfectly balanced. They take the time to actually wind the spring to the proper setting. It sounds like a well duh kind of item but you'd be surprised how many manufacturers don't take time to actually wind that spring to the proper setting we take that ramp flap out doesn't take a whole lot of force it kind of glides down to the ground again just an observation another observation i found on theirs some of the trailers that we see built down south don't seem to have enough self tappers these ramp flap extensions fall off in fairly short order if they're used commercially uh, they use about a i'd say a four inch screw pattern on these on that flap extension now depends what you're hauling you might not need that flap this gets down to about a quarter inch edge uh, if you are using a hand dolly that's probably nice or uh, i'll say a motorized mobility scooter similar but 
Uh, with that flipped up, you've got about a three inch ledge. Most anything motorized, zero turn mowers, uh, golf carts, uh, four wheelers, etc. UTVs, they're gonna run that over no problem. It does have the ramp flap extension. Uh, doors on these are rated to 4,400 pounds on standard height. Uh, there are super duty doors available for heavier duty application. Keep in mind, if you go extra height, it's gonna cut down on your uh, ramp capacity a little bit. D-rings, I'll show you the underside of these. They're built a little bit, I'll say, nicer than, than some. Uh, most of them just use fender washers down through the floor or you'll get a piece of flat. This actually has a three-sided stake pocket type shape underneath that would prevent it from pulling through. Just built a little heavier. Beyond that, I like that they're placed for a car. You'd be surprised. A lot of manufacturers throw them into four corners. They're just not at your ideal placement for hauling a car. This is a car hauler. So they put the D-rings front and rear where they would need to be for hauling a car. Uh, your vertical strips, this is in lieu of your Lawan strips that you would often see in trailers. Uh, those H molds are made from aluminum. Uh, just gives it a nice clean look inside. There's no Lawan to be chasing around the trailer, staple them back on, etc. Oversized 48 inch RV style side door. Uh, the cheaper doors in the industry are the strap hinge. This is your nicer RV door. It is an oversized 48 inch. Uh, you can lock these RV doors from the inside to the outside. There's your deadbolt. Uh, from the outside, you can also lock that handle. So you got two ways to secure it. You've got your step well on the side door standard as well. Uh, these RV doors are also a foam filled insulated door. Inside on the walls, you have three eighth. On the floor, you have three quarter. 16 inch on center walls, 16 inch on center floors. On the ceiling, We've got tube studs, and I should say it's tube in the walls as well. And then you've got two dome lights. Dome lights are tied to a residential switch on the side door. Fender boxes on these are powder coated. Like I said, they stick up about 10 and a half inches. They come out from the wall about six and a half. Between fenders, you've got somewhere in the neighborhood of 81 and a half inches. If you're not familiar with a beaver tail, like most car haulers, this does have a beaver tail at the rear. It drops you down about four inches at the rear. Uh, inside height, six, six. Your header's gonna take off about six inches, so it knocks you down to six feet. And then your beaver tail picks up another roughly four inches. Uh, for UTVs and maybe a light half-ton truck guy, six and three quarter, I'm sorry, six foot three and three quarter height through the door. And then width wise, you're gonna probably be somewhere around seven foot from spring cable to spring cable. A lot of folks don't realize those corner posts are five inches. You come in about an inch each side on the spring assembly. You got about seven foot of width left. So again, this is an eight and a half 24. Didn't mention weight yet. This trailer is gonna weigh in empty about 36, 3,700 pounds. That's part of the reason why we do all these with 5,200 pound axles. Uh, you can only imagine a 7,000 pound trailer would only leave you 30 couple hundred pounds of payload left. Not a good idea in our opinion, but we do see them in the marketplace. On a 10,000 GVW with this trailer weighing in, we'll say 37 on the heavy side, you're gonna have about 62 or 300 pounds left for payload, more than enough for a car or a couple mowers or whatnot. You're also gonna pick up about 15% tongue weight Tongue weight, of course, on your jack is going to get transferred to the truck once you attach it. You're going to pick up about 15% or 1,500 pounds there. Sticker head underneath the trailer. I'll show you those D-rings. Uh, D-rings uh, are going to have that three-sided stake pocket look. You also notice the beaver tails milled down. The rear sill on this is going to be tube. A lot are going to be formed. I point that out because it's going to be a lot stronger. And then I also want to point out the rear, I'm sorry, the outriggers, okay? And the trailer's undercoated in case you can't tell here. So this outrigger is made from two by six tube. I point that out because most in the industry are gonna be made out of formed. So all of your wall load, all your roof load, if you're in a high snow area, or if you're a landscaper and you're putting stuff in the wall, all that load is gonna go down uh, onto that outrigger off the mainframe. So that's a very important part of the structure. Most everyone in the industry on that's gonna be formed. Okay, looking at the holdback, you've got a aluminum door holdback. Many in the industry are gonna be plastic. I don't know that we're gonna be able to see it. 
Actually, you can over on the far side, you'll notice uh, all the wiring is going to be junction boxed. That's a nice detail. And then the header I was telling you about earlier, um, that's going to have gusset plates. And then you've got a tubular header. A lot in the industry don't use a header. And if they do, it's just made out of the form cross members. So a lot heavier duty here. Triple tube come, tongue comes back, ties in. You've got uh, gussets that are going to gusset that out. And then again, over here. Also, the step well is made from metal. A lot in the industry are going to make that just out of plywood. So a little bit nicer there. So folks, this is a 24 foot short track STWCH. Uh, you can also get this in an STW, which would be the same trailer with a flat floor at the back. Where there's the beaver tail, it would be flat. That would be the STW, the cargo model. We do keep a few of those. They're more ideal for your landscapers or uh, maybe contractors that want a flat floor. Uh, guys that are gonna be hauling cars, uh, they always want a beaver tail and some landscapers uh, like that as well. Uh, we offer these in a 16, 20, and a 24 length. Occasionally we'll have a 28 foot. And then we also offer them in an STRCH, which would be the round top. Um, round top model generally is gonna be a little bit more expensive. Um, basically same, same trailer, just rounded roof and then a radius front. Should also be clear, the 24 foot is measured to the corner. So the trailer to the center, probably gonna be about 25 and a half foot give or take the 24 foot measurement though would be the square box if you have any questions on this or any of our other trailers feel free to give us a ring at 717-220-4220 or you can visit us on the web at bestchoicetrailers.com thanks for looking